And as I'm going by, I can still hear bullets hitting the car. And, you know, I just kept going. I wasn't stopping. Caught on the crossfire, shocking surveillance video obtained by Fox 9 capturing a shootout between teenagers at a northeast Minneapolis gas station, nearly killing innocent bystanders. Violent crime scenes like that continue to spark debate over how to handle juvenile crime in the state's largest city. Fox 9's Paul Bloom tells us why this one shooting highlights the challenges facing police, prosecutors, and simply people trying to go about their day. During a late night stop for a soda and snacks at this corner gas station in northeast Minneapolis. But yeah, it mentally um, yeah, screwed me up. Joe Babineau and his friend found themselves in the middle of a shootout. How scared are you as this is unfolding? It was, it was altering, you know. I mean, I just got the hell out of there, you know, with my life. We are concealing Joe's face because of ongoing safety concerns over the teenage gunman. It looked like he was just firing, you know, wildly. Fox 9 obtained surveillance video of the entire encounter from February 28th. That, according to authorities, appeared to start with a stare down at the door between rivals. The first shot shattered the glass. Gunfire then continued inside the shop before spilling outside by the pumps. No more than 30 seconds, this kid backed off, started firing. He, he just kept backing up, just spraying the whole... Uh, parking lot. The shooting left one of the teens involved critically injured while Joe's pal left the scene in an ambulance with a gunshot wound to his foot. You know, we took so many bullets from one side. The other kid that was behind was firing from the other side. So the car was literally right in between everything. That is Joe's black Ford Fusion speeding away from the scene. We later counted at least six bullet holes in the car including one in the driver's door that appeared to be on a straight trajectory towards Joe, who's behind the wheel. So it literally hit that, that bolt and went somewhere. That car saved your life? Oh, you bet. This video helped Minneapolis police arrest two 17-year-olds who have a history in the juvenile justice system. What happened in this case was horrific. Hennepin County Attorney Mary Moriarty and her office later charged the teens with attempted murder and assault. And it doesn't matter whether it was done by a young person or an adult. We take gun violence seriously. Court records reviewed by Fox 9 show this shootout occurred less than four months after one of the suspects was put on probation for a prior juvenile firearms offense. In that case, police found a stolen Porsche at his home along with a gun and ammo. He pled guilty to lesser charges and was sentenced to two years probation and 100 hours of community service. Ultimately, the bottom line has to be about public safety. As for the other young man seen shooting wildly in the gas station, he too has a prior history that would indicate the escalation of dangerous behavior. Limited court records show he was previously sentenced in a first-degree aggravated robbery case when he was just 15 years old. Moriarty tells me her team is now considering certifying them both as adults. If uh, it appears that the only way we can keep the public safe is by certifying these young people and possibly sending them to prison, we will do so. But Moriarty has been criticized for not doing so more often when it comes to prosecuting young offenders. We need to do everything that we can to get these violent juveniles arrested, charged, and off the street. Just last week, the Minneapolis Police Chief and Hennepin County Sheriff questioned why some of those teens are not facing more severe charges. It's not about locking up every, every kid, but we have to ask ourselves with what we see in the streets of Minneapolis is releasing them immediately onto the streets beneficial to them. Moriarty insists it should be a societal goal to keep young people out of adult prison, arguing these statistical outcomes are so awful. But sometimes, like in this case, she says, she has no choice. You yes. want to see consequences here? Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to push it to the full extent. As for Joe Babineau and his experience caught in the crossfire, the decision here, he says, should be a no-brainer. They know they're under the age of 18, and they know that uh, these kids probably get a smack in the hand. I'm going to push to have it done as far as I can with this because this changed my life. So he's absolutely right. He should feel safe. The, the issue here is, and I understand you know, him saying, lock, throw away the key, 
So yes, some young people do need to go to prison for an extended period of time, and we will do that. But that also doesn't help the next person who goes into a BP, just you know, going about their business and ends up in the middle of gun violence. We need to address that as well. Both suspects here turn 18 in July. They are currently locked up at the Juvenile Detention Center in downtown Minneapolis. The state and the courts will now look at their history, psychological, criminal, and their potential for any sort of rehabilitation. I have spoken to both of their families, both sharing similar stories of childhood trauma, a draw to guns in the streets, and an inability so far to deal with conflict effectively. They are pleading for one last chance for their loved ones before a final decision is ultimately made about sending them to adult prison. Paul Bloom, Fox 9.